Today's um, presentation is on the application of simulation in blow molding. My name is John Perticulius, and I'm with Compuplast North America. We are the representative for Accuform from the Czech Republic, who is the developer of the uh, software that we'll also be showing in today's presentation. Okay, so let's begin. Uh, a little summary about the presentation. We're going to uh, describe the blow molding process, um, talk a little bit about optimization in the blow molding process, show some simulation results, and um, show those optimization examples in stretch blow molding as well as in extrusion blow molding. And we're going to do that with a, a couple of case studies. Now, the blow molding process, um, as you all probably know, is uh, used for production of a wide uh, number of things and bottles, tanks, packaging, um, and uh, various components, industrial or um, automotive. And it has a lot of flexibility. And uh, there are basically two main types of blow molding. We have stretch blow molding where the injection molded preform is stretched and inflated into the mold cavity. And we have extrusion blow molding where a parison is extruded down uh, between two molds. Uh, the molds close around the parison and then it's inflated into the cavity. The uh, optimization of this process, um, well, the goal is to uh, achieve the optimum or required properties, whether that be uniform thickness or a particular um, strength, mechanical properties in the final part. And there are various optimization methods that can be explored using the computer simulation. Um, and of course, with the computer simulation, you're not wasting machine time, you're not wasting material, energy. Um, so there's a significant savings in doing that. Now, in terms of optimizing the product in blow molding, we can select the correct material that has the, the best properties. We can adjust the initial thickness or, or temperature profile um, that we may have on our preform or, or parison that we're extruding. And we can control our process a little bit, rate of change or level of vacuum or pressure um, in, the, uh, in, the, in the process. For stretch blow molding, we have control of the stretch rod speed and, and final position. And in parison extrusion, uh, we have parison extrusion control in which we can control the thickness of the parison while it is being extruded. And there are uh, many, many more uh, ways of adjusting and um, uh, the, the initial shape that you start with to try to optimize the uh, process. So let's look a little bit in the uh, blow molding simulation software. Um, the software that we're talking about here is called the BSIM blow molding simulation software. And as I mentioned, it was developed by Accuform. And um, one of the um, main advantages of the software is that it uses a viscoelastic material model. The KBKZ model is the most widely accepted, um, but it is rather difficult to implement. So it is not, uh, you won't see a lot of software packages using it. It requires some some rather special um, mathematics and programming to get it to, to work properly and to converge. Um, in addition to, to that, the, the effect of temperature is, um, is uh, taken into account using the WLF temperature dependency function. And this is, again, very widely accepted. And it's very good for large temperature range, particularly near the area where the uh, polymer is, is converting sort of from a, a deformable uh, material to a, to a solid. Um, BSIM also considers the heat transfer between the tools and the material using heat transfer coefficients, which can be adjusted to, to represent uh, aluminum tools or perhaps wood tools. And it also considers the friction between the material and the uh, tools. So uh, this is basically how it takes into account using different types of materials uh, in, the, uh, in the process. 
So here's a kind of a simulation of the stretch blow molding process where the stretch rod pushes the preform to the top and then the inflation takes place to, uh, to form the final part. We have the preform here, which is then stretched up to the top and then blown out to achieve a certain thickness in the wall. And in this case, we have an even uh, or uniform preform thickness. Um, the colors that you see represent thickness, with blue being the maximum thickness and red being the minimum thickness in the part. And as you might expect, um, down here, or up here at this area here, the, the material stretches out the most, this large diameter, and um, becomes thinner. The optimization task is to find a suitable initial preform thickness distribution profile to obtain an almost uniform thickness on the final product of the bottle. So the procedure for, for doing this can be automated, and this is basically the, uh, the function that is used. We have the, um, the new initial element thickness. So on our preform at various points, our preform is approximated by a bunch of uh, elements and, and nodes, and at each one of those points we can specify the, the, the thickness. But this new thickness on the iteration step, step I plus one, is dependent on the thickness of the uh, previous step plus some constant times the difference between the um, achieved thickness and the required final thickness. So by using a formula like this, we can go through a series of optimization steps and achieve, uh, determine what the optimum initial comparison shape is. Now, the shape looks the same, but the colors represent different thickness on this preform. So as you can see, uh, the preform, um, um, in this case, the colors are somewhat uh, reversed. The uh, red is the low thickness and blue is the, um, yeah, is the high thickness here. So you can see that the preform is essentially gradually getting thicker as it gets to the curved end. Now, the um, result is as follows. If we consider uh, the thickness profile along that line, let's say around the bottle, this graph shows that the um, initial uniform preform resulted in a thickness variation that was rather large. So this is, let's say, this point right here would be this point right here in the, uh, in the bottle. And, and the, as you can see, the result is um, symmetric. But the initial uh, uniform preform had a variation anywhere from 0.5 millimeters to about 2.5 millimeters. By optimizing the uh, preform thickness profile, you can have a much more uniform thickness distribution throughout the part, just a little over uh, about 1 to 1.3 millimeters. Here's another example here. This is the final shape. This is the push rod, uh, stretch rod. This is the initial um, uh, preform. And you can see the grid on it. That's showing the finite element mesh that is used to, to represent that preform. And in here, this video here, you can see the actual stretching and the reduction in thickness and then the inflation into the final shape. So you can see that this area is getting thinner. The red area is the, the thinnest area. And the maximum thickness, of course, is very close to the uh, initial, initial position. This graph shows the thickness along points A, B of the um, part at different stages of the optimization. So you can see um, this line represents the starting uh, condition, which has a very large thickness variation um, along along that line. You can see the minimum thickness here. And then as we optimize the um, preform shape, here's step three, step six, ultimately step nine gives you a much, much more uniform wall thickness all along the, um, 
the, the product wall. This is the final, uh, this shows a comparison between the initial uniform preform shape and of course the final optimized um, preform shape. So here you can see that the, the, the thickness is somewhat complex. Now of course these are optimum conditions and sometimes they're not uh, totally practical in terms of, of creating a preform and to make it relatively easy to remove from a, um, from a mold cavity. So uh, sometimes you need to make some adjustments into uh, converting the, the theoretically optimum results to something more practical. Now here's the extrusion blow molding example. The parison is extruded out of a die and um, goes down under its own weight between the mold halves. The mold halves close and the parison is inflated to the final shape. And again, the colors here represent thickness. 